thank you for the cheers. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Um, well, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Um, I really prayed before I got up here, and it's really cool because the first time that I spoke on the stage, I was really, really nervous, and a lot of y'all were here and remember that, and um, I actually sat down um, with a podium in front of me and, like, almost, like, read out what I was, what I was, what I had written, and um, I had so much anxiety and fear, and it's been two years or two and a half years since then, so the fact that I'm even standing here in front of all of you with no podium is the Lord. That's a testimony in itself, because God has totally broken me free of so much stuff in my life, and that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, I grew up as a little girl uh, watching the Miss USA and Miss America pageant every year. It was kind of like a holiday in our house. And I also grew up watching Disney princess movies, and I love fairy tales. Like, I totally believed in a happy ending, um, sparkles, glitter, the whole thing. And so my dream was to become Miss USA one day. So as I got older and became an adolescent and then a teenager, uh, I started to experience a lot of self-doubt. I was uh, the new girl in school. Our family, we moved to a new uh, city when I was 12 years old. And that summer, right before I, I went to school, my mom accidentally got a little bit scissor happy and cut my, short, cut my hair and gave me like a boy haircut. And I had braces. And I had like my first breakout that lasted for like another 10 years. <laughs> like never went away. But it was one of those breakouts that was really painful and um, I had cystic acne and there was like scabs on my face and scars. And so I remember my mom teaching me how to use waterproof concealer because I was on swim team. I had to use like waterproof concealer as a 12 year old. And she would like help me apply it on my back and my chest. And, um, and I remember a boy that I really liked calling me tomato face that was so mean. And I was like, you know what? It's okay, because I'm going to be Miss USA one day. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> You're going to eat your words. Mm. And so when I was in the seventh grade, co coincidentally, I was 13 years old, and that year I was baptized. I had been raised a Christian, thankfully knowing Jesus my whole life. But I was baptized, and I joined this Bible study. And in the Bible study, there was this group of girls, and we all decided one night that we were going to make this decision, this, like, pact together that was going to um, basically make us be, like, world changers for God. And there was a speaker who came in, and, and she was talking to us about the power of purity and the fact that our body is a temple. And, and the, the power of saving your temple for your husband and so I was like, well, you can't get any more romantic and fairy tale than that. And so I wrote a letter that night to God. And I was like, dear Lord, I promise that I will never drink, smoke, try drugs, and I'm going to save my purity for my husband. Dear, I mean, love Kristen. And I um, folded it up and put it in my envelope. And then we, us girls, we just we talked about it after, and we realized we had all made the same promise. So it was really, really exciting um, because we'd made this bond together. But as the years went by, whew, that decision wasn't the most popular decision, and it led to a lot of really lonely nights and a lot of weekends where the phone didn't ring, and um, I just felt a lot of rejection, but I was like, you know, it's okay because I'm going to be Miss USA one day. People just don't know it yet. <laughs> and so I held on to that hope and to that dream. Uh, and so there was a lot of preparation that went into that. And I entered a lot of different pageants to prepare and to refine myself. But I would say that, that, that I started preparing nine years before I ever even stepped foot on stage. And in all of the pageants that I competed in, I was always a runner-up. Always. I was like, what is wrong with me? And I'm like, what am I missing? Like, what's going on? And I was like, I just, I had this need for validation from especially adults, and I had this people-pleasing issue with adults and people in, in authority. And so I had a need for approval, I was super insecure, and I had major sensitivity issues, like I got my feelings hurt a lot, and I was offended really easily. So 
after all of this like rejection and preparation, finally I get to the Miss USA stage and I find myself in the final moment holding hands with the other girl and they call my name as the winner is Miss USA Kristen Dalton in front of millions of people on national television. And I was like, yes, finally, now everyone knows that I am worthy and I am beautiful. And now I can believe finally that, um, that I'm worth it and I can be confident. But then the next day, <laughs> the criticism started rolling in the criticism that I had kind of had heard before, like, you're too, she's too vanilla. She's not even that pretty. She has a really big nose. I have no idea how she won. It was a mistake. The pageant was rigged. Crazy stuff. So I find myself in my dream, this pinnacle of, of my dream, and I'm sitting in my new apartment in New York City, laying on my bed and feeling like the runner-up again. <sighs> and... I had reached what I thought was going to complete me, but really it just, it left me empty. So I was like, what's wrong? What's missing? After my years Miss USA, I moved to Los Angeles. And, oh, man, talk about a competitive city full of comparison. <laughs> and that is definitely what I faced. And I realized that I had a lot of... Um, I felt a lot of intimidation. Like I would walk into a, events or parties and feel like I wasn't meant to be there. Like I would feel like I was an imposter. And it wasn't until one day someone said to me, they were like, Kristen, don't you know that you are a daughter of the king? And I was like, what? Oh my God. No one's ever told me that before, but I really like that. And that changes everything actually. Because if I'm a daughter of the king, then that means that I am a princess and I'm royalty and I wear a crown that lasts forever and it doesn't just last for one year and I don't have to seek other people's approval anymore because I have God's approval and he's the one who created me. And I started to really press into what that meant because I was really passionate about being a princess full time. And so I was like... <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? What does that look like? What does it mean for me to be royalty? What is, how does God see me? And, and it's totally changed my life in the last three years. I have a relationship with God now that's um, like wondrous and it's full of magic and mystery every single day. And he speaks to me now. Like I used to, I used to like hear people be like, God told me. And I'm like, what do you mean God told you? But yeah, God like talks to us and he wants to speak to us and, and we can hear from him when we press in and listen and we know that, and we believe that he wants to speak to us and we know that he wants us to come boldly to his throne. And so I've seen him supply in my life according to his glorious riches, which are exceeding and abundant. And, um, and I, in this verse, this amazing verse that I found in Proverbs that says, she is more precious than rare jewels. And that's just everything, right? Because that tells us what our value is to God. It tells us how he sees us. He says that we are more precious than the rarest jewel that is in a museum that you can't even buy because it's that valuable. That means that you are priceless, basically. And the coolest thing about my newfound identity as a princess is that I don't, I have been broken free of like the bondage to, to other people and to their approval and to pleasing others because now I know that the Lord is my cup and he fills it up to the point of overflow because Christ came to give us a life of abundance. And I just want to share with y'all this vision that I had when I was in Israel. I went to Israel in uh, last September, and I went to the prayer wall. <laughs> this is so amazing. And so I put my hand on the prayer wall in Jerusalem, and I got this picture of Jesus on the cross. <sighs> and he was like on the cross, and he was, he was just writhing in agony and pain. <sighs> but as he, was, as he was on the cross, all of a sudden, he started seeing pictures of, of different people's faces. They were like flashing across his mind. And every time he saw a different face, he would like relax. 
and take a breath and be like, it's worth it. And I think that there's no more romantic love story in the whole wide world than the fact that our creator and our king sent his son to die so that we could be his son and his daughter. And I got a picture tonight (laughs) of all of y'all receiving crowns. So even if you don't know what it means to be a Christian, and you might, it might sound crazy to you, I just invite you to take a leap of faith tonight and let God crown you so you can walk in your royal identity. Thank you.